Hello and welcome you're watching Health and Wellness Save a Life I'm Gargi Rawat It's a sad but true fact that the number of people dying from cardiovascular disease is steadily rising in India most of these cardiac deaths are sudden and on the spot it's possible to prevent these sudden cardiac deaths if they receive immediate medical attention and CPR The recent incidents of some celebrities collapsing suddenly and passing away due to a heart attack are concerning and very shocking. Now there's an alarming rise in the number of young patients with heart attacks and sudden cardiac arrest. Can one make himself or herself capable enough to save a life in an emergency situation? Yes, it is possible if you're well trained in CPR. So raising public awareness and understanding of the practical applications of CPR is an essential strategy to increase the success rate of CPR in cardiac arrest cases. Save a Life is an initiative through which people will be made aware of the early signs and symptoms of cardiac arrest. train them on CPR and highlight the role of CPR in saving a life today we have with us eminent cardiologists who can help you understand sudden cardiac death and the role of CPR we're joined by Dr K Venkatesan interventional cardiologist general physician diabetologist Kongu Hospital Tiruvannamalai also Dr Vikram B Kolhari a consultant cardiologist Apollo Hospitals Heart Institute Bengaluru and dr shrinivas mova interventional cardiologist madhuri, madhuri hospital hyderabad i uh, thank you so much doctors for taking out time and joining us on the program today and dr venkatesan first to you cardiovascular emergencies and symptoms are one of the most common reasons for patients attendance in emergency department what are common cardiac emergencies if you could explain to us yeah uh, cardiac emergency means actually it's uh, related to heart emergency the most common emergency what you can able to see in day to day activity or day to day emergency department in cardiology the most common thing is acute coronary syndrome in that uh, the first thing will be acute myocardial infarction uh, apart from that uh, what are the emergencies we can see in the casualties uh, congestive cardiac failure patients presenting with acute pulmonary edema or patients having acute pulmonary embolism or cardiac tamponade in that the most common thing what to we see in day to day is the acute myocardial infarction that means uh, the blood supply of the heart uh, imagine heart has got three blood vessel if one of the vessel is having 100% occlusion due to presence of silent uh, coronary artery disease that time there is no flow in the coronaries so that is the thing we can say as acute coronary syndrome or acute myocardial infarction in this we have to uh, act very fastly uh, uh, what is the thing we can able to do uh, we have to put the patient on loading dose like antiplatelets and statins and then immediately within one hour whether the patient is in pca capable hospital or non pca capable hospital means if it is a non capable pca hospital we can go for thrombolysis that is uh, clot lysing agents like streptokinase tenecteplase we can use or if the hospital has got a facility of doing primary pca means you just give the loading dose to the patient and ship the patient to cath lab there we can go for immediate coronary angiogram followed by angioplasty if you are doing like this we can able to save the patient all right dr mova what is sudden cardiac arrest what causes a sudden cardiac arrest if you could explain to us at the onset thanks gurgi for having me here so sudden as the name goes is sudden so if the heart stops within one hour of the presenting symptoms what our patient experiences like giddiness or whatever so it is called a sudden cardiac death so typically it is if it is uh, caused by fast beating of the heart you know the lower chambers of the heart are called ventricles if uh, typically they beat 60 to 70 per minute but if they go on to beat like 200 times 220 times then heart just stops it cannot function basically because of the very fast heart rate in those circumstances the heart stops uh, functioning there is cut off to blood supply to the brain so the person collapses that's called as um, sudden cardiac and if it goes on to death it is called sudden cardiac death as it said it is commonest cause is because of vf men ventricular fibrillation it is called sudden fast beating of the lower chambers 80% of this is again because of a heart attack so we can uh, generalize uh, by saying that heart attack causes the sudden cardiac death in most cases right dr kolhari does the sudden cardiac arrest mostly affect people with a history of heart problems Yes, sudden cardiac arrest is basically when the heart stops pumping the blood. Uh, it is almost it's generally a pre-terminal event. Uh, most common cause of sudden cardiac arrest is heart attack. 
So underlying coronary artery disease, blockage in the blood vessels that supply blood to the heart is one of the most common causes for sudden cardiac arrest. Um, in younger individuals, the fatal arrhythmias like ventricular fibrillations are, uh, are also equally important causes of sudden cardiac arrest. And, and uh, sometimes uh, underlying uh, congenital heart diseases also could be a predisposing factor for uh, having a sudden cardiac arrest. But uh, it is more common in patients who have pre-existing cardiac disease. Right, Dr. Venkatesan, at a time when a good physique is uh, the new cool young adults are hitting the gym more often than ever, but uh, why are youngsters and gym goers suffering from sudden cardiac death? We have, have, have had so many instances of late. Yeah, this is the thing, it has been seen recently. Most of the young patients uh, having a good physique are going for sudden cardiac arrest and losing his life. What we, the reason behind is, uh, this young patients might be having a silent CAD without knowing that uh, they will be going for a isometric exercise in the gym like weightlifting. Uh, suppose patient has got CAD with around uh, 50 to 60 percent block in the coronaries. What will happen if they go for sternus exercise means this block in the coronary will go for rupture. That is known as block rupture. Uh, that is the most common thing for myocardial infarction. That is one reason we can say for uh, this uh, sudden cardiac arrest in young individuals. Apart from that, what are the other things we can able to encounter for this sudden cardiac arrest in young individuals is most common thing is the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's a variant of uh, disease in the cardiac muscle and arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia. And uh, if myocardium is normal, coronaries are normal, again cardiac arrest means you have to think of some channel of this like uh, long QT syndrome, short QT syndrome. Because these patients, uh, this kind of condition will go for ventricular arrhythmia and ventricular fibrillation. Within one minute if you intervene, if you don't intervene, patient will lose his life. So these are the various things we can able to enter for this uh, sudden cardiac arrest, especially in the young individuals. Because this is most commonly seen in sports persons, especially football players, basketball players, they will be very much active. But suddenly what they will happen in the ground, they will go for fainting and if you won't see, they will lose their life because what will happen in that condition, patient will go for ventricular fibrillation. So immediately we have to use the AED and then we have to survive the patient. If you won't do it, naturally it's the loss of life for the patient. So the reason is these are the common things, mainly channel opathies, cardiomyopathies in the form of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia and silent CADs. So these are the reasons we can say for this young heart attack in young patients around uh, less than 40 years of age. Also, Dr. Kolhari, if you could tell us what are some of the emergency actions for helping someone experiencing a heart attack and cardiac arrest? So, as you asked me because of the signs, so signs will be... Or uh, sudden cardiac arrest. Uh, the most important thing is first call for emergency medical help. Uh, make the patient more comfortable, either in a sitting or a lying down position. And if the patient is not allergic to aspirin, uh, aspirin 300 mg tablets can be given to the patient in case of symptoms which are suggestive of a heart attack. However, if patient is unresponsive and there is sudden cardiac arrest, patient is not breathing well, then CPR is the most important thing. We should start with chest compressions. Uh, in fact, uh, every individual should attend uh, CPR classes to know the basics of cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Uh, chest compressions should be started at the earliest. And in places like, say, uh, airport or where automated defibrillators are available, we should get the machine uh, and connect it to the patient. It generally gives us, uh, it prompts us how to use it. If, if there is a rhythm which can be shocked and patient can be revived, the automated defibrillator by itself does the work. So it is crucial that at public places and airports, if uh, automated uh, defibrillators are there, they should be used. Uh, and, and most important thing is call for medical emergency help immediately and shift the patient to the nearest center where uh, cardiac emergencies can be managed. All right. And uh, what are the signs and symptoms of sudden cardiac arrest? Dr. Mova, if you could uh, answer that. Well, sign, symptoms uh, will be known if the person, person comes back from dead. So usually we we'll tell once it is resuscitated, then the commonest symptoms would be what is called as fainting. So, a person loses a lot, he loses his consciousness and he falls down. So, that's the commonest symptom. He can have sometimes like a racing of the heart or sometimes because the commonest cause is, as I said, a heart attack, he can have chest pain. So, but as I said, the common, uh, these are the common symptoms, but signs would depend on the examination by the doctor at the time of the presentation to a medical facility. So, commonly, there is loss of consciousness, there is a, very low pulse or even a lack of pulse. BP is usually not recorded. 
and breathing also is shallow or is sometimes absent so these are the signs of cardiac arrest meaning usually when the heart stops usually the lung also it stops working <clears throat> so also the brain so heart the signs of heart function will not be there lung signs will not be there and also the brain will be deeply unconscious so these are the signs that can be recorded in a medical facility all right uh, with that time for us to slip into a short break but don't go anywhere we have many more questions to ask the doctors stay with us Welcome back you're watching health and wellness and we're talking about heart health and how you can save a life let's go back to our panel of doctors and dr venkatesan when a sudden cardiac arrest occurs cpr can save a life so what are the correct steps of cpr yeah uh, see cpr is a cardiopulmonary resuscitation that is the thing it's a life saving thing procedure that can be done in all patients who has got a sudden cardiac arrest as already explained by our two speakers what is the definition what are the signs you can able to see in sudden cardiac arrest a uh, cpr how we can do cpr is uh, one thing what is the guidelines given by the american heart association the person who are doing cpr whether they are trained in cpr has uh, got a ls or bls certificate that is there are two different things suppose a patient faints uh, another person sees suppose the patient is trained in cpr it's no problem suppose they are not trained in cpr what is the thing we can do is you just put the patient on the back of the thing and you just kneel to the patient and what is the next thing you have to do is you have to keep your heel of the hand over the center of the chest and then you just interlock your hand both hands and then you keep locking the both elbows and the shoulder should be straight and you give a firm compression the depth of the compression should be more than 5 cm that is the guidelines given by the american heart association and then you have to go for very fast and hard compression that should be around 100 to 120 compressions per minute that is the thing uh, yeah normal layer we doesn't know the steps of cpr they can do like this suppose a patient a medical person who is doing cpr that is different actually uh, in that case what we can do is we have to go for a uh, that is a, previously it's abc now it's cab that means circulation airway and breathing so uh, two persons are needed for adult the ratio what is given by this american heart association for adult is it's known as uh, 30 is to 2 that is for every 30 compressions uh, another person has to give two breathing that is the one which is given for adult whereas in case of pediatrics or infants the something is different 15 is to 2 that is the thing cpr is done for all the patients this is mainly in patients who has got sudden cardiac arrest sudden cardiac arrest means there will be no any breathing there won't be any pulse uh, if it is aed is available well and good we can go for just uh, if you can able to save the life of the patient so these are the proper steps of cpr right uh, dr mova what is the role of cardiac rehabilitation for patients who have suffered a cardiac arrest so this is towards the end of the story when the person has a cardiac arrest some treatment is done like cardioplasty or bypass and then patient is fit for discharge and then discharged so the medical prescription needs to be whatever is given by the doctor needs to be effectively implemented by the patient for a quick scientific improvement and long lasting improvement so in the in this case uh, the improvement of the heart function basically so for that it is usually customized to the patient's needs customized according to the function of the heart what we call as uh, uh, ejection fraction on echo and so it is customized to patient patient and the rehabilitation is mostly regarding the exercise program and the educating the patient of uh, how uh, he should go about his life how uh, quickly he should start uh, his day daily activities uh, like uh, driving a vehicle going out and all these things so as i said this uh, usually it starts the day the patient is discharged according to the prescription given by the doctor at time of discharge this goes on about for 3 months and uh, most of the patients who are admitted in cardiac icus whether they have a heart attack whether they are recovered from heart failure they underwent angioplasty stent or even the bypass or valve replacement so most of the heart conditions when they are admitted in the hospital because of an emergency when they go out the rehabilitation aids in uh, bringing them back to life quickly so by helping them the exercise needs educating them regarding the heart related problems as well as the risk factors for heart attacks like diabetes management bp and all that so it's uh, aids in the patient's recovery as quickly as possible so this is what is cardiac rehabilitation 
All right, and as you doctors say, prevention is a better than cure. So, Dr. Kolhari, what lifestyle should one uh, follow to prevent uh, sudden cardiac arrest? So, the prevention of sudden cardiac arrest mainly uh, depends on risk factor modification. Uh, as the most common underlying cause for sudden cardiac arrest is heart attack, we have to look at the risk factors that are there for a heart attack and we need to modify the risk factors so that we can prevent a heart attack. So, uh, basically, if somebody is a hypertensive, uh, we have to look at the blood pressure regularly, keep the blood pressure under control. Diabetes, uh, diabetic patients should get their sugars checked regularly and control the blood sugars. Then uh, patients who have dyslipidemia, that is high cholesterol levels, need to take proper medications as advised by the doctor to keep the cholesterol under control. Maintain a healthy body weight and follow a healthy diet. Uh, somebody who is obese needs to lose weight. Uh, physical exercise is extremely important. At least moderate intensity exercise on most of the days, in the sense at least five days a week, is uh, very crucial in, pre in, in, prevention, in prevention of a heart attack. And... Diet is also uh, very important. Um, we should avoid saturated fats, reduce carbohydrates in our diet, uh, reduce the total fat content in our diet and eat uh, more and more fruits and vegetables which are rich source of uh, antioxidants which also help in, uh, in preventing um, heart attacks. Another most important preventive aspect is quitting smoking. Uh, if you look at uh, smokers, if, if somebody quits smoking, the risk of having heart attack for them becomes equivalent to that of a non-smoker by one year. So, uh, smoking cessation is the most important form of prevention that one can uh, one can have so that we can prevent the uh, incidence of uh, occurrence of heart attack or sudden cardiac arrest. At the same time, uh, it's most essential that we maintain a healthy diet and healthy uh, lifestyle, uh, a daily exercise regime that is very important. And at the same time, manage mental stress. Stress management also goes a long way in preventing a heart attack. So uh, stress relaxation techniques, yoga, meditation, all of them uh, help in reducing the risk factors for uh, heart attack and prevents uh, the occurrence of heart attack in the longer run. All right. Uh, so there we spoke about, you know, diet and various steps we can take. Dr. Venkatesan, is there a role between dietary cholesterol and heart disease? If you could explain that to us. Yeah, uh, this question is a funny thing, actually. Uh, to be honest uh, to say about this answer, actually there won't be any much relation between the diet cholesterol and the body blood cholesterol. Uh, but uh, most of the people are very much mindful in taking cholesterol uh, because uh, there are some persons, there are some genes which are responsible for the uh, dyslipidemias in the patient's body. Uh, that is known as hyper responders. Uh, normally, body has got a system. It has got auto-regulation because uh, in liver, once the patient takes more amount of cholesterol, it naturally decreases the cholesterol production in the body. Uh, if you see the cholesterol, there is a good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. A good cholesterol, what we say is HDL, that is high density cholesterol. A bad cholesterol is a low density cholesterol. Uh, once the patient takes more amount of saturated fats, normally body has got a property of decreasing the production. That means if the cholesterol is there, it will produce both bad and good cholesterol very equal amount. So the effect is neutralized. But sudden, there are some conditions like family hyperlipidemias, hypertriglyceridemia. There are some conditions where naturally there will be more production of more LDL uh, and the size of LDL also more important actually. If the patient has got a LDL of very large, that is a large LDL, it's non-atherogenic. Whereas small dense LDL is a very, very much atherogenic. And HDL is a very good cholesterol that is essential for patients. And uh, there are some drugs apart from this uh, dyslipidemia. Uh, this cholesterol uh, is not only reason for dyslipidemia. It only produces the most common diabetes mellitus, hypertension, obesity. These are the various contributing factors for all cardiovascular diseases. And we have got many humpty number of drugs to reduce the cholesterol, mainly to decrease the LDL, to increase the HDL. The most common thing what you can use for this uh, decrease in the LDL is the statin. That is HMG co-eradictase inhibitors. That depending upon the risk level by using the atherosclerosis cardiovascular risk score, uh, whether it is less than 5% or 5 to 7.5%, 7.5 to 20% or more than 20%. This 20% the ASB risk is very high patients, high risk for dyslipidemia producing heart disease. So in that case, we have to go for high intensity statins. Mainly you can use atrovastatin or rosvastatin. If you're giving rosvastatin, we have to give the maximum dose of 40 milligram. Atrovastatin, we have to go for around 40 to 80 milligram, depending upon the patient tolerability. So next thing to reduce the triglycerides, 
you can have another group of drugs like uh, fibrates that is phenofibrated it has got the property of producing more amount of decreasing the triglycerides levels in the body and it has got another property of increasing the hdl so that is a good cholesterol so that is the property of phenofibrates apart from that the vitamins there is niacin nicotinic acid has got the property of producing increasing hdl level that is the uh, one good thing about niacin apart from this drugs uh, that physical activity suppose a patient does uh, walking uh, daily walking or around 20 minutes or 30 minutes there is a one which gives increased amount of hdl in the body apart from taking drugs natural thing to produce increasing hdl is you can go for physical walking the guidelines what is given by this uh, walking is if the patient goes for daily walking around 30 to 45 minutes is enough you can't able to go for daily walking at least weekly thrice what is the ah given for walking is at least it should be more than 150 minutes per week so these are the guidelines given by the american auto association if you are following like like this you can able to decrease the cholesterol you can able to increase the good cholesterol that is hdl by taking drugs you can able to decrease the triglycerides and ldl so these are the things we can do for this dyslipidemias all right uh, dr mova if body weight is in control then does it mean a person's blood lipid levels would be normal and he and she cannot get heart disease body weight is an indirect reflection of the uh, metabolism of the body as you, as my previous speaker was uh, alluding alluding so 80% of uh, our blood cholesterol comes from the intestines means from the mouth what we eat only 20% is what is synthesized by the liver so intrinsically body synthesizes cholesterol but it's negligible mostly it is what we eat that causes um, the dyslipidemia dyslipidemia is a manifestation of uh, obesity which is common in india we are the uh, diabetic capital of the world uh, so see, it's uh, no wonder that we are the heart disease capital of the world so body weight reflects bad metabolism which is called as metabolic syndrome in medical parlance but it is an indirect evidence of bad metabolism and bad lifestyle to be uh, to generalize that so managing weight goes a long way in managing your lipids so weight uh, weight management as again my previous speaker was saying it's mostly dietary and exercise so correcting the metabolic defect which causes uh, the various problems it is funny if you think that the diet is causing a heart attack so but it's actually so we as a culture are i mean adamantly non exercising adamantly rice consuming or even carbohydrate consuming culture as a whole of course it is more in the southern part of india north it is uh, less of rice more of other uh, things but uh, so our diet plays a our cultural and beliefs so like for dietary and uh, lack of exercise these are playing a major role in the obesity what is called as metabolic syndrome and then that causes the various heart diseases then basically that causes diabetes hypertension and all that that in and that in later it leads to heart attack so you can say if a is equal to e then a is equal to b b is equal to e then heart attack is caused by bad lifestyle right. bad diet all right well uh, thank you so much doctors for joining us on the program and uh, creating awareness about this very very important issue thank you and thank you all for watching at home goodbye